Thank you so much, Derek, for coming online for us. So it's a privilege to have you online for our. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much. So. Thank you so much. Yes. So, uh, yes. Let's for the audience and for us. Uh, can we? Uh, can you talk a little about your professional journey from where did you start, and where are you right now? So uh, I started. Uh, I started designing sets in college. Uh, it's kind of as a hobby, um, but I fell in love with it. I just kind of stumbled into it and uh, was w fell, you know, pretty instantly in love with designing sets. It's really it was sets for plays, plays and musicals, mm -hmm. and uh, I became kind of obsessed. I decided that this is what I wanted to do with my life. And uh, so I, I uh, went to graduate school. I went to, um, I went to Yale Graduate School. Uh, I had done my undergraduate work at Harvard, and there was no, uh, there was no theater program there. Um, so I, I, went to, uh, I went to graduate school at Yale Drama School to study, uh, study theater design and, mm -hmm. um, uh, and, and gain some skills. And so I did that. That was a three-year program, a master's program. And uh, from there, uh, I moved to New York, and I basically just started uh, uh, telephoning people and, and, you know, offering my services as, as an assistant designer. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I found work with a variety of different people, um, and that was hugely uh, productive. I learned a lot from a lot of different designers as I, as oh. I worked in New York. Um, and... Uh, and then eventually I started to get my own uh, small design jobs, very small, uh, um, little, you know, little off off Broadway theaters and that kind of thing. And, uh, and from then it's really been just kind of, um, you know, a, uh, a slow progression um, to designing the kinds of shows that I'm designing now. Wonderful. We know that you have been to India and you have an Indian background so tell me about mm -hmm. us, uh, your indian childhood story and your childhood so where you started and how was it well i was born in london um, my father was a graduate student at university of london studying the history of india uh, and um, from uh, there we moved to uh, evanston illinois a suburb of chicago where my father uh, was a professor of the history of India. And because okay. he, he taught Indian history, um, we, he, he took a sabbatical um, in 1964, and we moved to Calcutta for two years. Uh, so I was age um, six when we moved to Calcutta. Uh, yeah. So I attended first and second grade uh, in Calcutta. And... Um, uh, and since then, I've been back many times uh, to India. Not that many times, but I've, I've made four other trips to India uh -huh. uh, um, since then. And uh, so it's always been a really important uh, place in my life. And um, uh, w But after India, we returned to Evanston, Illinois, and uh, I finished my school there. And then I went off to, um, I went off to a boarding school in Vermont for mm -hmm. the last two years of high school. Then I attended Harvard and Yale after that. Mm -hmm. well, so that's, wow. sort of, that's sort of the, his, the brief history of my childhood and education. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so can you talk about some, some memories of India? Yeah. Because we here yeah, definitely would relate to that. And has it helped? Say that again. Can I talk about what? Yeah, you, if you can talk about your memories in India and has that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the thing about India that's, that's I think, so amazing as a designer is, um, is just how incredibly rich the country is, uh, you know, in terms of color, design, the sort of variety of design styles in India, um, the sense of history, the sense of age, um, uh, the, the, you know, I, I always say to people who are going to visit India that India, visiting India is a kind of an assault on the senses uh, because it's very visually stimulating, but it's also, a lot of it's a very noisy place. It's a smelly place or, you know, there are amazing smells as you walk down the street of, of smoke and spice and food cooking and, 
people using cow dung as fuel and you know it's very it's a wonderfully pungent uh place mm-hmm. uh it has you know there's a very you know it, a lot of india indians use a very have a very bold color sense very vivid color sense mm-hmm. um and and a very kind of elaborate um um uh decorative architectural style for you know a lot of the, a lot of the, the, the buildings so um uh, I, I I find it's an enormously rich place, and I I sort of think about it. It's you know a lot when I need something that's that's sort of if I wanted to do something that's visually dense, I, I sort of recall those experiences in India. Wonderful, awesome. awesome. And now uh, now 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 coming to your professional journey again. Now uh, can you talk about what you're doing right now and how you got into now. For the audience, he's a person who designs the Oscar stage. You know what I mean. You you see, it's a visuals. He he is the man behind it. So you know how how you got into that and the way you design, it's beautiful. It's like out of the world. How you create that? Thank you. Well, um, you, you know I. Uh, with the Oscars, like anything else, starts, you know, you start with, with trying to develop an image. Uh, um, and so I, you know, I look for, um, you know, I look for images that are related to what it is we want to say. You know, if it's something about the movie business, if it's something about a, a particular um uh, style of movie making a p- particular period of the history of movie making and then you know I, I basically just start by sketching i just do drawings little drawing doodles and i i basically try to figure out if there's a way to do this that um you know I, i'm trying to find things that um it's you know i guess i don't look to make it pretty at first i try to make a, you know I'm, I'm more interested in trying to figure out wh- what's a way to present something that uh that will seem um, maybe original and um, you know maybe a little surprising and and not not pretentious and not ostentatious. Um, so, although some of the things are quite elaborate, but but um, you know really trying to avoid um, really trying to avoid visual cliches as much as possible. So. Uh, uh-huh. And so and the, really the only way to do that is to experiment and try, and try to come up with something that's new. If, if, and if you've got an idea, you've got an image, you go, how do I put that on stage in a way that, um, uh, you know, hopefully people won't have thought about it that way before. And that's, that's really my goal. Whether or not I achieve that every time, I don't know. But that's, that's sort of how, that's sort of how, uh, how I approach it. And, um, you know, uh, and you know you can look at you can look at examples of award show scenery you know if we're talking about the oscars but this is true of anything this is also true about the theater and you can find plenty of examples of things that look bombastic or pretentious um and so it's really about it's a sort of combination of um being trying to be authentic to whatever it is you're doing um and uh and then just trying to to strip away the stuff that you don't need and distill it to something that is essentially essentially beautiful. Beautiful, and definitely it comes as so beautiful. Exactly. Visually, it's not very, I would say, it, it's subtle, it's beautiful. It yeah. gives that grand look. It's really awesome. Yeah. We love it. Definitely. This, we can talk oh, about thank it. you. <laughs> thank you. We can talk about an audience perspective. It's visually so appealing that yeah it's like wow we want to do something yeah. like that absolutely yeah as a wow. <laughs> yeah. Right, thank you for giving right. us that experience that kind of experience absolutely well you're welcome i'm glad you, i'm glad you appreciate it 100% do do we have an option <laughs> other than appreciating that you create that <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so Derek, I mean, it was lovely to listening to your professional journey. So, what is that uh, yes. challenges came in between? Like, what were the key failures, and how you have overcome that? Well, you know, um, 
the thing about working in the theater, and most of my work is in the theater. Most of my work is not for television or for the Oscars. That's that's the Oscars is what, of course, many people. See. Okay, right, right. So um, failure is you know is definitely a um, uh, an important part of uh, any kind of artistic. Um, endeavor uh, it's you know a certain amount of failure is inevitable and um, and that's that's a kind of um, fortunately or unfortunately that's a uh, I suppose a necessary byproduct of experimenting you can't really experiment unless uh, some of those experiments are going to fail it's just mm. it's sort of not possible now what you try to do is weed out the failures before they reach the stage but sometimes you misjudge uh, and sometimes you know, you try something that, you know, and I don't decide these things in a vacuum. I decide them with collaborators, with directors and producers, and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there are other people involved. And so as a group, we try to kind of weed out the, the experiments that look like they might fail. Um, but sometimes we get that wrong. And sometimes we go, you know, that is a really interesting, cool, new idea. Let's try that. And you do it and it doesn't work. So um, yeah, obviously you can't, you can't fail all the time, but if you're going to, if you're going to experiment and try something new, there's going to be a certain number of, of failures. You know, one way that I mitigate against that is that, um, you know, in terms of my career is that I do a lot of projects and not, some of them are, have, some of them engage in bolder experiments than others. Some of them are, 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 uh, you know, I take a more conservative approach. Um, it really depends on the pro what the project wants, what the director wants, what mm -hmm. the producers want. Um, so, um, the, you, you know, hopefully by, by doing a balance of things that are more experimental and less experimental, mm -hmm. uh, the, um, you know, you, you, you have a little bit of, um, uh, of a buffer for when when those experimental things fail, but the truth is you can't you could never really progress. You could never really uh, progress personally as an artist, or progress, you know, or or move uh, the the uh, the art form forward unless you took some bold risks and unless you you know experienced a certain amount of failure. There's some things you just don't know whether they're going to work until you try them, um, and that's the that is the honest truth. Um, and so um, you know I do. I, I do uh, about 12 shows a year, 10 to 12 shows a year. Mm -hmm. Some of them in the theater, some of them television. And, you know, I think, I'd like to think that most of them work, but, you know, to, you know, to, if I'm going to be honest, there's going to be, there's going to be one or two every year that don't work so well. And um, mm -hmm. so that's, that's kind of the nature of the business. Yes. <laughs> True. You know, the other thing, I'll, I'll add one more thing about that, which is that as a designer, um, it's rare that the thing fails a, a, a product produ production, mm -hmm. the production will fail solely as a result of the design. It is usually it almost always, uh, if the production doesn't work, it's usually a combination of a whole bunch of things. Right, uh, right. so it's not really just the design. It's that it's that the whole thing doesn't just doesn't sort of come together. Okay. Right, right, right. I agree. Yeah, so basically, I mean, I wanted to know, like, what is the key ingredients uh, you take care of when you're designing the stage? The, the key ingredients, um, uh, do you mean, like, what it is that, I'm not sure I understand the question, like, what is it that I deliver, or what is it, what's key to making yeah, it successful? What is that you take care of when you're designing the stage, like, for any event, or any, any, any Ah, uh, I see. Well, so what I what I take care of really is a design um, that I you know ultimately uh, will deliver in terms of um, you know the the thing that my studio will produce mm -hmm. are usually uh, sketches, mm -hmm. uh, very often a scale model, either made you know a real scale model made out of paper and wood and cardboard, mm -hmm. or a virtual model made um, you know made um, uh, in some uh, CAD type program on a computer. Mm -hmm. So one or the other, um, we don't usually do both because they're, they tend to be expensive. But, um, uh, so, so, you know, there's a sketch, there's a model and, uh, and then the kind of final thing that the, 
people who are going to execute the design get our scale drawings, which are very much like an architect's drawings. Mm -hmm. So uh, we always produce a complete set of scale drawings of uh, the set, all of the pieces of scenery, which has you know a, a ground plan, a section of the whole thing, how it all fits together in the theater. And then there are individual plates of elevations of each of the pieces of scenery. And then on those plates of elevations are detailed drawings uh, in a larger scale, usually that show, you know, the how the the very the sort of more minute specifics of, of what it is, and then also usually those those sheets of drafting also include all the specif specifications, like what is the thing made out of, um, how is it to be finished or painted, um, all that kind of stuff is a part of those drawings. So at the end of the day, the sketch and the model are really more like divine, design tools to help uh, to help arrive at what the design is going to be mm -hmm. and the, the you know the kind of final interface between me and the people building the set are those drawings those scale drawings that's them that's their main tool in terms of of understanding what the design is that and some conversations and maybe some paint references and color references that kind of thing Okay. Uh, you know, and then for me, that that that's not the end of it because I usually need to supervise the construction of the de of the design. So that means I'll make a number of visits to the shop where they're building the set, oh. uh, and then I need to supervise um, the um, rehearsals when people get on the set for the first time, mm -hmm. um, because there's a certain number of decisions you have to make, you know, on site when you actually see the finished thing, uh, mm -hmm. and you look at it with all the you look at it with lighting. Uh, how it gets lit is a big part of that process, um, and um, so all of that. Um, and so it's not re it's really not over until it opens or until it airs. Um, and uh, you know, very often there's quite a bit to do in those last few days uh, in terms of making adjustments. Right, right, absolutely. So being from the event industry, yeah. we know how, how the last yes. one works. <laughs> right. So, so in, if you have to put it in points, like three main ingredients, so what will be that? So this is basically would be for the aspiring designers. Yeah. So if you can say that these are the things which you need to take care uh, while designing. Yeah. Well, I would say first and foremost, what is the story that you want to tell? What is it that, um, mm -hmm. you know, every, every design tells some kind of a story. Um, you know, whether it's for um, a play, a musical, a television event, or a party, um, you know, everything, everything has got some kind of a narrative behind it. And so I would say that the, you know, that's the thing that's going to, 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 to drive the event. What is, what, is the, what is the story that the design is trying to tell? Um, now, that might be a very obvious type of story, or it might be a very subtle type of story. It might be something in between. Um, but um without that it's just you know purely decorative and even in even the purely decorative is hard to mm -hmm. determine without without sort of knowing what the story is you want to tell right. so that would i would say that's number one mm -hmm. uh number two is um is is good drawings i think it's really hard to do um you know anything at the most except the most conceptual type of design without the drawing skills to, to work it out. Dra drawing is really so connected with design in terms of understanding uh, proportion, um, shapes, um, how things fit together. You know, drawings are really important in terms of looking at how something fits in context. There's very few things you can design that don't have a context. So, you know, whether it's a, a, or a television show that is you know, in a studio or, you know, a party that's in a room or an event hall, like all of those things have to relate to the space that they're in. Okay. So drawing, you know, there, there, there are many levels to the drawing. There's drawing, you know, that, you know, that just shows the, the, the design itself, but there's also drawings that show how the design interacts with the space. And that's, the, that's you know, hugely important. And ultimately, you know, the accuracy of that, matters a lot um i don't think you necessarily have to be accurate when you're starting at the beginning you know when you're just dreaming when you're when you're doing rough work i think sometimes it's actually useful to be maybe not so accurate 
but at some point it all has to become accurate um, so yeah. that you can test whether the thing really fits the way it's supposed to fit into the space. Um, you know, there's nothing worse than, than, there's nothing worse than designing some chandeliers and then discovering they just look too small in the, in the, oh, you know, absolutely. you know, you know, when you put, when you put them there and that's the way that that typically happens is that you have forgotten to draw them in the space. But if you, if you draw everything in the space and relative to the space, it's hard to go wrong. Uh, because then you, you know, um, and you know, seeing really is knowing in those cases, the designer, it's really about seeing it and you can't see it unless you draw it, unless you draw it accurately. Yes, uh, so that's, that's, I would say, um, you know, a really, a, a, a really big, a really big part of that. Um, and, you know, I'd say if I'm, if I'm trying to limit it to, to three things, I would say the third thing is not settling too easily. There's always going to be um, uh, budget compromises. So, or I should say budget restrictions. There's always going to be venue restrictions. There's, you know, there's going to be people who tell you we can't do that because of this. Um, you know, there's rules, there's spatial limitations. And it's not that those should be ignored, but um, a lot of good things get ruined in those, you know, if you don't pay attention mm -hmm. to, to that part. So you really have to, that's you know when you when you're going through that kind of final uh, troubleshooting uh, and planning stage, trying to figure out how do you make this thing come on in budget, or how are you going to get around, you know, dealing with this venue restriction. Mm -hmm. That's the time when you really have to be um, uh, tenacious and uh, and really kind of go the distance and and. and try to come up with, you know, that's the time where you really have to be creative and, and think through what the consequences are of those, of those decisions. Hmm. Okay. Great. Great. That will definitely help yes. the aspiring designers. Of course. It's Good. <laughs> and it's, it's, and it's especially hard when you're getting started because the, um, the, when you're starting the, the, um, you know, often you're working on smaller projects with smaller budgets and in and, and, and more difficult conditions. Mm -hmm. And so figuring out how to do something that that looks wonderful with, the, you know, despite those those restrictions makes the job extra challenging. But okay. it really means it really means thinking about it just means thinking about all those decisions and not necessarily accepting every restriction saying, how, mm -hmm. how can we push this? How can we make this better? Awesome, awesome. I believe that's it's going to take a sip of something here. Right. Absolutely. Because giving maximum value out of the money so that you showcase your talent the best. Yes, absolutely. Yes. 